Welcome to Cigar Time, your friendly Tuesday night show all about the art of cigars. And I'm Art. You caught us. We're eating dinner. We're having delicious pizza. So forgive me for a second. I'm going to take a bite. Mm. This is really good. This is good. Mm. Hey, Art, where's this pizza from? Not Italy. <laughs> oh, come on. It's from Horsham. Really? Yeah. I just happen to have a menu. It's from Barbecue Barbecue, which is right up the street from the Horsham Cigar Store. I'll pass out the menu. Well, the odds you have a menu in my restaurant. Yeah, right. Now, Barbecue Barbecue, by the name, obviously, sells a lot of delicious, wonderful barbecue. But what you probably didn't know, they make equally delicious pizza. And I, uh, let's review the pizza. <laughs> Out of five? Uh -huh. I give it a five. five. Oh, seven. <laughs> I give it a seven. I've never heard of barbecue pizza before. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you see it. I see it, and I'm eating it. This one's a, an apocalypse now. What's that? <laughs> it's called it's called a porcalypse now. Kind like a movie. Yeah, it's That's got right. bacon, wood fired onions, wild mushrooms, mm. and more bacon. Oh, <laughs> it also, it also broken has, every box. It also has pepperoni and um, brisket. On brisket it. on it. Yep, I brisket on it. it. It's awesome. It's good stuff. Now you can get conventional pies with pepperoni, cheese, I like the plain cheese. Pepperoni, mm, I love the pepperoni, but mm, pepperoni. It's really freaking good. It's very good. So, we're gonna finish our pizza, and then, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna be smoking. Welcome back. That was mighty fine. I think we ought to start every awesome. show. Eating? With, with, either, <laughs> with either barbecue, no. pizza, or something really good and fattening. No. What do you Hot think, guys? Ribs ice cream. Chicken wings. Ice cream. No, not ice cream. It's fattening. Yeah. All right. No. Enough of the food. This is about cigars, guys. Well, this cigar the lovely Miss Key will tell us about our first cigar. Our first cigar is the Trinidad Club Selection Toro. The wrapper is an Ecuadorian Cubano. The binder is a Connecticut Broadleaf. And the filler is Dominican and Nicaraguan. And the size is the Toro. Very nice. <laughs> I just want to point out that I'm using the scissor cut today. Wow, look at the size of that. So, yeah. It's the first scissor cut on cigars. Cigar. Yes. It is. Who makes those scissors for you? Monte Cristo. Ah. <laughs> Shameless plug, Tim. Shameless what a plug. What a gratuitous plug. <laughs> and awful. Jewish How babies what's the little, everywhere are What's the little tip on the end for? Uh, for it's a moil tool. Mm. He's just talking about on the cigar. On the cigar. Oh, just a pigtail. It's a pigtail. Yeah. It's just, just a pigtail. Okay. It's a Cuban tradition that they used to Tim's back with us today. It's great to I be I was going to get to that. No, you yeah, how do you miss him? He's wearing orange. Uh, we're honored to <laughs> have Tim back church. for a second visit with us. He was on a few weeks ago, uh, and we felt there was a lot more to be said about him and his company, and uh, we invited him back. So we're going to light this cigar up. Now, was this cigar specifically paired with that pizza? <laughs> I got pizza in my teeth. Yeah. Probably tobacco. It's better than tobacco, is right, yeah. Paul, do you have any uh, illuminating uh, advice for us and words of wisdom and our oh, continuing so education awful. program? Well, I think we're going to be uh, talking about trends in the cigar industry in general. we got the right guy in Tim here. Yeah. We, yeah, we do. But I thought I would kick it off with a little discussion about a term that, that gets thrown around an awful lot, mm. uh, and that's boutique cigars. Mm. And, you know, we all know basically what that means. It's a little company making small quantities of unique cigars. Or at least we hope that's what it means. Because there's actually boutique cigars and pseudo boutique cigars and not exactly boutique cigars and we ought to really explain what that's all about so let me start with uh, a few examples of a few different cigars and sort of identify where they fit in this in this scheme of things can you hold it up for you yeah it's okay are you Santa Claus with your bag of weed? Yeah, really. What do you have in there? <laughs> I, I have enough for me to smoke the rest of the day. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think so. 
Uh, Almost enough. For if me, the so. boxes are full. <laughs> <laughs> hey, only, I you, saw that, Scott. You only have enough till seven o'clock. You're yeah. right. If they're full. Okay. Um, first example. This is a, a cigar called Panacea. As uh, you know, and we've had him as a guest on our show, Paul Bush from the Panacea Cigar Company, is truly a boutique cigar maker. He creates each of his cigars himself. He blends them. He boxes them. He virtually drives around in his car and delivers them to he the cigar shops that he sell them. Uh, and He's that, a nice, really nice guy, too. Yeah. He, he is good. And he was on the show. Yeah. And good looking. Terrific guy. <laughs> and in essence, that is a true boutique cigar company. Things come in different scales, though. I'll give you an example. Here's a cigar called San Latano. It's made by a guy called A.J. Fernandez. Uh, he is also a true boutique cigar maker in that he really has blended many, many cigars. Most of what he does is relatively small quantity. Uh, he has a distinctive signature profile to most of the cigars that he makes. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, most of the cigars that he makes are for other people. And that's one of the things about some of the boutique cigar companies that you should know. They expand on their business by creating new blends and new brands for other companies. Uh, this, however, the San Latano, is his own brand. And we're not going to talk about the cigar in particular. I, I'm just using these as examples of what boutique and non-boutique are. This is a, an Alec Bradley New York. Uh, Alec Bradley is a brand that we talk about a lot on this show. It's a, another, I would call it a boutique company. Uh, Alan Rubin runs around and, and uh, blends tobacco and sits in, in, uh, in the barns and puts his fingerprint and his style on all of the cigars that have his name. But like many boutique cigar companies, he doesn't actually make the cigars. He turns to one or two particular factories that he can work with very closely to create the cigars on their premises, and then they produce them in some quantity going forward. I think currently, uh, Alec Bradley only works with two factories. But th that's a, it's, it's a different approach to boutique cigar making in that they don't make their own cigars. Uh, this is the F La Flor de Antillas, which is uh, sort of all over the map as far as boutique goes because it's made by Pepin Garcia, who is one of the leading boutique cigar makers in, in the industry today. Uh, he grows his own tobacco, he blends his own cigars, he does everything himself. But this is a cigar that he created for distribution by Ashton. So it's, uh, um, I believe it's no. distributed. No, no, it's no, distributed no, no. by my father. My father. I'm yeah. thinking of a different You're brand of, of his. Cristobal. I'm thinking of St. Cristobal. Is Thank you. It's his son. Uh, so this, this is one of his own brands, although he too makes cigars for a lot of other companies and other brands, much bigger companies than him. This is a company we were just talking about a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. uh, La Flor Dominicana. Uh, this is Lito Gomez's company. This is also vertically integrated. He grows his own tobacco. He blends to his own style. Uh, he does a lot of things in small batches, but collectively, all together, it's a pretty big company. So it's not what you might think of as a boutique company because it's, it's pretty big. It's, it's a major brand, uh, but his approach to each of the cigars that he makes is very much a boutique approach. Paul, would you say, and, and Tim, feel free to chime in on this one. I believe that a lot of this boutique business is an offshoot from the original cigar boom in the middle 90s. Because prior to the middle 90s, the larger companies kind of dominated on the premium side of the tracks. And there may have been very small regional makers and things, but 
you know, if you lived in New York and they were rolling them in Cincinnati or, 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 or wherever, you really didn't hear about that brand like you do today. So this is all, you know, caused by the boom of which there were literally thousands of different brands that cropped up from about, I guess, 94, 95 to about 98, 99. Sadly, a lot of them were, how should I describe it? A lot Crap. of them, well, <laughs> I call them dog rockets, but <laughs> to be kind, and their cars are all gone now, although some of the labels live on, <laughs> but we won't get into that on this show. The, uh, uh, I'm the, sorry, the, no, I was just going to say, the phenomenon, I think, of boutique brands stems from that, and as recently as 2003, uh, Pepin was in here when he was working for another large tobacco company, and he, he made us, he rolled some cigars for it. Back then his English wasn't that great, and, and he, he wasn't the Don Pepin you know today. So, I mean, it, it's amazing how he managed in, in 11 years to leap forward to be one of the household names of the cigar industry. Well, I think a lot of art, again, it stems from the uh, cigar boom. Out of the yeah. ashes rose yeah. a lot of these guys who stayed on, you know, the uh, Rocky Patels of the world. Uh, right. Pepin came after the boom. You know, a lot of guys. Lido. Lido. Yeah. A lot of like, guys who may have been around, maybe you didn't hear right. of. Right, right. But, um, you know, they make their own tobacco, have a lot of their own tobacco, or making their own blends, and are selling it to other people, and also keep their own name. So, again, it is kind of a trend that was from that right. era. I Ashton, agree with you. Ashton's a boutique cigar, too, that really yeah. caught on. In essence, yeah. yeah. It, it was yeah. initially a boutique cigar right, but it just, made for them yeah. by another company, but it, it grew into one of the Maybe major, major national. Yeah. 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 Right. I was going to say Fuente. And, uh, and uh, uh, when Ashton first came out, it was not a nationwide launch. It was very regional. Right. In, That's why it's boutique. Around yeah. here? Yeah. yeah, basically, this is Ashton territory. But uh, it, it, uh, it's amazing, as Tim said, from the ashes of the ruination of probably thousands of different facings during the boom, which an awful lot of them were not of the quality that exists today. True. I mean, they were tossing stuff out there. Those of you who were in, uh, in smoking cigars back, you know, I guess it's almost 20 years ago, uh, would probably remember overpaying and getting poor quality cigars. I mean, it could have it could have retarded the cigar business in this country by decades, and and miraculously, because there are some good uh, people in this industry, people like Tim and his company, and others like him, that preserve the good quality tobacco, had enough sense to age the stuff properly, because things kind of died in the late '90s and the early early 2000s, and you know, as hot as things were during the boom. They cooled off a lot, so I think the companies were able to, you know, flush out the small makers who were who were sending, as Paul called it, less than stellar cigars out there. They were, flushed out. Like they were flushed out. They were flushed out, and and the bigger companies and and the, and the boutique people that ex that survived during that period of time and were building quality product were enabled. They they were able to age the stuff better, grow it longer. You know, just develop a much better product so that today I think this is a boom time in the cigar business for the smoker. Yes. And at mm -hmm. the end of the day, Absolutely. the only person who's important is you, the smoker. We yep. don't exist if you don't smoke it. Very true. That's true. That's why I think the true term master blender is someone, if you have a cigar that's been around for 5, 10, 15 years, someone who can take a cigar and blend tobaccos from different, you know, ears to make it taste the same as it did you know, five or 10 years ago. It might not be exactly the same, but their job is to yeah. continue to keep the consistency going. I mean, right. a gentleman once told me one time that our job is to sell it and the consumer is to enjoy it, but his job is to keep it the same. That's very, wow. very true. Yeah, very difficult. And the, and the larger cigar companies in our industry, of which there are a number, and there's a couple that really are much larger than, than a lot of the medium and smaller size, have been able to maintain that consistency so that if you smoke, like let's say a, a Romeo y Julieta Reserva Real, if you smoked it five years ago and you smoked it today, unless something has uh, imperiled your taste buds, it's going to taste the same. Correct. Which is what you want. That's exactly the consistency and the quality is what you should be looking for in cigars. And you can still, now that the boom is sort of over, you can still get, at a reasonable price, a very good-tasting and quality-made cigar, which, unfortunately, 
during the boom, that wasn't always the case. Well, I think one thing that, that was great about the boom, Mark, from when I knew you back then, is that the education of the smokers today is phenomenal. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, people back then, they knew about cigars and they enjoyed cigars, but today, I mean, everybody knows a lot. It's, I mean, it's yeah. own world now. Especially yeah. the people yeah. that watch Cigar Time. Yes, yeah. that's right. there's, there's a lot for, lot more information. I mean, one thing that we've embarked on over the last... Uh, that's right. just going to touch on this. We're going to talk about that, yes. One thing that we embarked on over the last three or four years was the uh, education of not just people in our business, but people who smoke cigars, you know, the public. We have a, a site called the Monte Cristo Social Club com. It's free to join. It um, Members, you get a free virtual humidor. You uh, get a free daily article. It's, a, it's more of a lifestyle thing, not just a cigar site. But... Um, it talks about individuals in the industry, uh, locations when we do events, like an Arts Fine location in Fraser, the Monte Cristo yeah, yeah. Monte Cristo Lounge. Yep. So it it invokes, you know, uh, thought, you know, communication among people in the industry, uh, wine pairings, Scotch tastings. You know, it's a it's a great site to check out if you if you want to. That's cool. That's yeah, any anything that educates the consumer is only good. And if you can come out and have a good time. And you know, hang in a lounge and good camaraderie and good conversation. A lot of people do business in our lounges. Uh, it's all good. It's all good because let's face it, there aren't too many places left where where a man or a lady can go and be themselves and not have to worry about being ostracized because they're smoking or anything like that. Because we know in a lot of places, smoking is frowned upon. Well, obviously, in 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 a tobacco store, not just ours. But in all tobacco stores, smoking should be encouraged and smoking should be enjoyed. And, and any tobacconist who does want you in there smoking in his store, well, too Come bad to for them. Store. Well, yeah, we'll take it. <laughs> we'll take yeah, it. Yeah. But Art, you guys are truly an industry leader in having a, a unique concept with as many stores as you have and as many locations as you have where uh, the great public can go smoke. That's yeah. very unique. Well, I saw years ago the trend towards. Uh, municipalities and governments you know shutting down the ability to smoke in public places and you can't you can't hardly smoke at a bar or a restaurant anymore and and no restaurant no and if you don't have a lounge for your customers or friends to come to and enjoy a cigar and, and especially in this part of the world in the, in the winter time I mean if you don't have a place where you can smoke you're missing out on it we're missing your business it's just good business to have lounges, public, private, whatever. But just places where people can come, be themselves, not have to worry about getting, you know, you don't need a tux to come into our places. And just come and enjoy yourself. I like our lounges because we have public and private. Yeah. And, and most, our most memberships, them, yeah. you benefit a lot from them as well. So, yeah. you know, I really like that about our lounges. Well, it would be pretty cool to see some of our uh, members with, in tuxedos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tim, as would long you, as we don't have to. As, yeah, as long as we don't have to. Wait. Yeah. Tim, would you do us the honor of telling us what we're smoking here? Yeah, you're smoking something that's uh, very, very unique. It was only originally released to 20 to 25 cigar lounges across the United States. We made uh, four cigars, which were the Trinidad Club Selection, Monte Cristo Club Selection, H. Upman Club Selection, and Romeo Club Selection. Today we're smoking the Trinidad Club Selection, which is a uh, pretty tea said. It was an Ecuadorian <laughs> Cubano wrapper, Connecticut Broadleaf binder, Dominican and Nicaraguan filler. Again, it was a very unique, uh, basically not sold at the retail level unless you went into one of these 20 or 25 locations across the nation. Uh, what we decided to do was go into a different way in how we're promoting this cigar now. So this cigar was, again, we talked with Art, He's cornering the market on it again, <laughs> and I mean, he has a great deal. You know, regular price for this cigar would be 180 bucks for a box of 20. Art's doing it again for 69.95, and believe me, this is a nice peppery cigar. It's more for a seasoned smoker, <clears throat> not overly strong. On a scale of uh, one to ten, as far as strength, I would give it maybe a 7.5. Yeah. Uh, definitely uh, something you should go out and buy today. I would say. Especially for 69.95, <laughs> you can't beat it. Quantities are limited and good while supplies last. Let me get that across. Yeah. While supplies. I'm getting a buzz. Waves. You're getting a, a buzz? I didn't want to say it too loud, but uh, yeah. No. You don't yeah. see me over here, I can't talk. All right, well, we'll, we'll start on the other side of the table okay. with, with the review. Okay. Paul? Uh, it's got a great amount of spice to it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And underneath, it's complex, it's interesting, it's not sharp or bitey at all. No. Um, smooth but powerful is what I would say. Uh, let, like me, let me just ask Tim a question. Yes. 
how how old are these cigars? Trinidad Club Selections. Hmm. I would say these were produced in the Copan factory on a rough estimate, probably four years ago. All right, so they got some nice box age yes, in them, do. and that's what you want, box age, yeah. and that's what smooths the cigar out and gives it, you know, the rich box, taste. Box age. Yeah, aged in the boxes. Mm -hmm. Scott, before you say what you think of the cigar, do you want to tell people how they can get them at that ridiculous price? Ah. No. Right. No? Okay. <laughs> yes. Never mind. That's so, uh, Scott being Scott. Yeah. Yeah. Moody Scott. I've got to be different, you know. Um, let's go to the website, cccigars.com. That's um, double C, cigars. Double C, cigars. I just had to say that. that. Oh, I, I'm deaf in my I, I say that. So, anyway. Uh, just go to the website and there's a coupon for that. You have to have the coupon. You can print it out or if you have it on your, your cell phone, go to any one of our nine stores. Um, and $69.95 and while supplies last and... They won't last long. They won't last long. Not Probably price. not even a week. No. no I seriously doubt it. No, they won't last a week. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how many thousand boxes we have left, but they'll just disappear. Your review? My review. Uh, I really I enjoy this cigar a lot. Uh, I am getting um, some spice. Uh, there's a little, I'm getting a little hint of pepper and another sweet spice that I can't quite uh, pinpoint. Uh, and I'm also getting some, some coffee from it. Um, really nice construction on the cigar. Very, I think it's it's as Paul said, it's not very bitey. Um, medium, medium. I would say right down the middle of medium. Um, lots of great flavors. Though. I'm very much enjoying this cigar. Rob, uh, I agree. <laughs> Man of many words. No, I'm kidding. Uh, unlike you guys, I'm getting a nutty taste, nutty woody taste from this uh, cigar. It's very, it's burning perfectly, well constructed. Um, I'm sure Tia will love the band, as she'll tell you. Yeah. Um, it's very smooth, very complex. It's very smooth. Again, very smooth. I, I smoke this on the golf course all the time too. So. Rob, would you consider the cigar smooth? It's smooth. <laughs> Did I say that? Well, I say it seven time. times already. Right? <laughs> wow. Um, I enjoy it. I think it's a very good cigar. I get news for you. This is very smooth. <laughs> smooth. Tim? Um, I think we all agree it's smooth. Yeah, it's smooth. Um, <laughs> I agree with uh, Rob. I do get the nutty, kind of woody taste to it. Um, I think it's on more of like a heavy medium, maybe a light full, because like I said, I'm kind of getting a little buzzed off of here. Can I say that? <laughs> Uh, this is the You can start dancing on the table? No, oh, should I? No. 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 Um, but this is a great cigar. I love the ash. The band is classic. And just a really tasty cigar. And is smooth. It, is it smooth? It's smooth and tasty. <laughs> smooth. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I'm buzz. I can't say anything. Oh, well, let Tim review his own cigar. <laughs> <laughs> let me review my own cigar. Uh, this is one of my favorites from when it first came out. Um, this is something that I, I really enjoy. I've enjoyed over the years. And... Um, I just think that you should take advantage of the great deal that uh, Cigar Cigars is offering you out there. Nine locations. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Right, hey, Paul. Yes. Do you remember where all nine are? Yes, I do. Well, why don't you uh, illuminate us? Horsham, Colmar, Phoenixville, Oxford Valley, Westchester, Fraser, Glenmore, Reading. I knew you were going to leave that. Freehold, New Jersey. <laughs> like, right. yeah, I was waiting for that. I was waiting. I was waiting. Like, yeah, I didn't leave Reddy? you for last. Freehold, went Freehold went New yeah, Jersey. Saw, last. Well, my review of this cigar, plain and simple, <laughs> it's smooth. <laughs> In it's a word. Smooth. I get the little woody taste. I get a That's nice it. nice little sweet spice out of it. <laughs> but it definitely is smooth. You know. Definitely. In bird wow. Bird. And I can tell you the uniqueness of buying this cigar again, it was only sold in re roughly 20 to 25 locations across the nation, which were the uh, Monte Cristo lounges at the time. Again, it was a corporate decision for us to uh, go in a different way. Uh, and again, Art cornered me, cornered our company, and said, I'll take those off your hands. Because again, he has a Monte Cristo lounge, so he was offered to him, and he was allowed to do it. So great job, Art, and great marketing. And they just basically said, help yourself, pay us whatever you want. Yeah. 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 Pay yeah. us yeah. when you want, don't worry about it, it's all good. So that's why we're able to bring it for sixty nine ninety five. Yeah, right. But supplies are limited. No, but I, I'll be honest. So when, I, when I met Art back in, uh, I think it was ninety five or ninety six, I um, met him one time in Vineland at a store in Vineland when he used to be there. <laughs> and he's always been a gentleman. And again, he's uh, I would, he, he hasn't always been my direct customer, but he's always been someone that I could talk to or I knew about who was industry di driven to help the brick and mortar customer. Not just say his stores, but he's always been key. And trying to keep the 
cigar industry afloat by you supporting your brick and mortar stores. Brick and mortar stores are the lifeblood. Very Lifeblood and, and, and you know, if you don't have those, you don't have places to smoke in a lot of cases. So support your local tobacconists, whether it be us or anybody else, it's important that you show them the love. So we're starting to run a little short on time, so we're gonna we're gonna rate this cigar. So Pia? Yeah. Because I'm getting buzzed for 0.95. Oh, oh yeah. wow. <laughs> if she completely high, it would be a five. <laughs> Give her a minute. Uh, that's pretty good. Um, because it's so smooth, <laughs> I'll give it a 475. Paul? I give it a 475 because it's smooth and I'm getting a buzz. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I agree. I get 4.75. Oh, this wow. is getting easy. Because of the uniqueness <laughs> of the blend, and because Rob says it's smooth. <laughs> because Rob is smooth. Yeah, Rob is smooth. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. I give it a five. Oh! oh! Remember, First one. He said this is one of his favorite cigars. He did, he did say that. Mm -hmm. First one ever. Yeah, is that the first five? First five. Holy moly. Wow. Well, I mean, it's a great cigar. Again, I mean, you know, that's while you've been here, we've smoked two great cigars. Thank you. And coincidentally, your company made both of them. Oh, wow. Did you see how that works what out? What a coincidence. Nice. Yeah. But no, seriously, seriously, this, this is a solid 490. And that makes it a, just about a 490 overall. So that's, I believe that might be the highest rating we ever gave a cigar. Yes. And it's smooth. I think we've done smooth to death with it. <laughs> Pretty much. But wow. Art, but Art, I always try to do what you taught me a long time ago. I, <laughs> I smoke, I'm afraid to get where I, I smoke for the people and not for myself. Ah, that's true. That's right. that's yeah, true. we smoke bad cigars so you guys don't have to. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Well, we haven't said give that in a long rub. time. Give them the rub. Well, it, 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 we're very fortunate. We also get to smoke some really good, really ones. good right. cigars that's true. and are able to pass on some tremendous savings to everybody. So we we appreciate that. Well, Tim, it's been quite an honor to have you here now uh, twice in two weeks. No, and, uh, three weeks. Three weeks, I guess. I'm losing track of time. But I mean, uh, you and your, you know, we value your time, we value your knowledge, we value your tutoring and your help with our business, and it means a lot to us. Well, it's always great to drive around and stop at one of your nine locations. <laughs> <laughs> you come back, we're going to ask you where the locations and, are. And other, and other shops in the area, too. No, I, I, of course. There's other, always, guys, yeah. other guys. No. There are people that and exist. There are always people, yeah. But it's always great to do that. I mean, if you got to stop in, might as well stop in one of the best. Thank you very yeah, much. That's you. a thank wonderful you. comment. Well, I guess it's time for everybody to say goodbye well, quickly. Smoke often and smoke smooth. And quickly. <laughs> oh, man. I was going to do something with that. Life's hurry, too, hurry. Life's too short to smoke cheap cigars. Yeah. But smooth ones. You don't yeah, okay. Smoke them if you got them. Smoke them yeah. if you got them. Bye-bye for now. Ciao for now, everybody. And as always, we really appreciate your viewership your patronage of our stores, and now that the warm weather is coming on really strong, get out on the golf course, have a good time, enjoy your cigar, because we really enjoy having you. Can you now, smoke a cigar on the beach? Sure, somewhere. Oh, yeah, why not? Try it. Thank you. <laughs>